All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm not very good at these uh, at these day to day farm videos. It's it's not. I, I enjoy the the lectures and the conversations a lot better. But uh, we got oh shit, we're at all or shoot, we're at almost ten inches for the month of uh, of rain. Uh, we got five inches in the last couple days and uh several hail storms i got a little video of that on my phone i'll put up it's just like a, a one minute video um i'll put that up on its own and so yeah five inches of rain the other day uh so now it's time to start field work so the no-till guy of minnesota is going to be the first guy back in the field to do tillage and uh yeah figure that one out and it's only because of soil health because I, I'm not going to be able to do it on all my acres, but a few of the fields that got some history of soil health, uh, it's going to allow me to get out there and get going. It ain't pretty, but it's getting a little bit late for the small grains, and uh, and this year needs to come up, John. And so I gotta, you know, hashtag the struggle is real. You know, we're looking at instead of 10 days this spring, we're looking at maybe you know 15 days of a planting season. You know, the consumer needs to know how horrible it is out there. Um, if we can't laugh at ourselves, you know, who are we going to laugh at? So, yeah, the Mighty Mulch Master, if you guys aren't familiar, it runs them super wide blades. 20, they're, they're a 24 inch wide sweep. And, uh, and then it's got these really aggressive um, harrows. And you literally only run it like an inch or two deep. And uh, it knocks all the dirt off of the roots of the plant. And lays it on top and with them wide sweeps uh your rhizome plants like your quack grasses and even some of your deep taproot plants you know with the old field cultivator you'd kind of pop them up but that root is so long it just bounced between the sweeps well it ain't doing it on this old girl and uh so we got them behind big sexy and uh we're gonna we're gonna see how that works out we're gonna go out to this field out here and and go from uh, give it a try all we can do is give it a try maybe it's way too wet and uh and i'll be eating my words well no i won't because i'll just delete this video um but let's go give it a try and see what happens well today was not going to be a repair video uh and with the tires laying on the ground it still won't be a repair video because i'm not going to take time and record repairing that i just got to figure out how to get them wheels back on that implement um that's kind of a crappy deal whatever <laughs> Right, guys I'm gonna try and concentrate on tillage while you guys concentrate on listening to this handsome devil uh, yield does not determine success or failure on your farm and uh, I've got one for cover crops one for big yields and uh, and then one today for some no-till experiments the science behind why when we attempt some no-till trials um, why we should expect a little bit of potential yield loss and uh, you know ultimately on the farm it's dollars in dollars out big yields don't mean nothing if you had to buy them and that's kind of where we're at in modern agriculture we're just simply buying them because we're farming dead dirt 
the dead dirt, dead dirt, it needs tile, it needs fungicides, it needs lots of fertility inputs. And when we move to no-till, we try to get away from that stuff and also improve quality of life on our small family farm uh, by reducing our labor out in the field and our overall equipment time and expense and all that happy horse crap. And, uh, and the need to write so many checks out to the, to the local retailers, we can uh, kind of put some of that money in our own pocket and maybe instead of taking vacation time off uh, to be doing tillage, we take vacation time off from our jobs for a vacation. I know that it's kind of stupid, but I don't know. I think someday that'd be kind of fun to get to that point. And uh, so what's going on in our soil? So the first comparison we see a lot of common of uh, on social media and farmers is uh, we got field number nine here. We got field number 10 right there. Uh, both uh, field number 10, we did not do anything last fall. Field number nine got its normal primary tillage. Now this spring, we're gonna come in and do the, nor the normal uh, finish up, you know, and then we're gonna plant them and treat them the same for the rest of the year. And, uh, and we should expect the same outcome because they got treated the same, but not quite, not quite. What's happening in the soil when you come in and do tillage, you're burning up your carbon and your organic matter, and you're freeing up a lot of nutrients and uh, adding a lot of oxygen to the soil. Uh, that's not a good thing. That carbon and organic matter are more important to you in the long run than freeing up a little bit of nutrients. Um, and so, but, but, you know, field number 10, is not exactly a picture of healthy soil yet. It's still dead dirt. You know, this is our first year of, of trying to do anything with it. And so um, what's going to happen is field number 10 is going to have a level of compaction to it because we did not stir it up. And that level of compaction is going to limit some of our air or the ability for that soil to breathe. It's going to limit some of that root growth and it's going to have limited life mineral natural fertility natural mineralization in the soil and uh, that's all big things that lead to reduced uh, nutrients getting to our plant and all that stuff leads to less yield and so we hear from the university saying don't ever give a plant a bad day and yet in this no-till experiment that's very common uh, we're giving our plant a bad day every day. And uh, so we need to understand that and we need to give it a little bit of leeway uh, and a little bit of forgiveness and do a little more diagnosing as to what's happening instead of just basing it upon yield. Um, was the yield reduction that first year enough to be a major upset from the cost of tillage? Uh, but in 10 years from now, if we were able to get that ground successfully transitioned to soil health and no-till, and we've reduced three or $400 per acre at today's cost of stuff, wouldn't that mean a whole lot more? And uh, so where I'm at on soil health, I'd rather get 120 bushel corn off that field, and that would make me a whole lot more money than if I did full tillage on that field and got rid of the soil health practices that are generating money and uh, and tried to get 200 bushel off of that. And that sounds weird, but dollars in versus dollars out. And so, um, but that's kind of what's going on. And, and the other thing is, is by, um, by, with that limited root growth and stuff, we might actually be limited on or other nutrients might be lacking you know by free by stirring up that soil maybe we um, maybe we stirred up a little bit of micronutrients that by not stirring it up on field 10 maybe field 10 is actually lacking a little bit of micronutrients that might not be enough to trigger a leaf response but it might be enough to trigger just a, that few top bushels off the top end. And so you got a lot of things going on and each one of them things is very good at 
taking some yield away. And so we got to kind of keep that in mind. Now, the second, we, you know, that's why I say build a strip and stick with that strip for five years and no-till is simply a tool in our soil health toolbox. Uh, I'm not a big believer in zero tillage kind of deal. And uh, uh, so the other thing going on is uh, um, another common, very common experiment that we see. Uh, before I tell you about it, I'm going to tell you about this um, this this corn hybrid test plot that decal wants me to put in for them, and uh, so the the decal seed is going to be one third of the the test plot, and the other third is I go get a bunch of seed from Fraudulent Business Network, Channel Legend, Gold Country, Pioneer, Peterson, and all that. So today. I do my tillage, my normal program, and I seed all the decal seed. And one week from today, we come back and we put in the second one third, we do our normal program and put in the second third of our hybrid test plot. And now two weeks from today, we come out and now that part of the field's a little mucky, little messy, so we don't even do our normal program, we just no-till into it. And now uh, this fall, I want you guys to all come out and join me while we do the, the harvest data. And you can see how good that decalb is on my farm and uh, how good it does on my farm. And uh, I think a lot of you guys are gonna be like, well, that has to be about the dumbest, the dumbest uh, corn hybrid test plot. And I'd say, okay, if that corn hybrid test plot is so dumb, then how come so many farmers are showing us on social media that exact scenario? So many farmers on social media will show you that exact scenario. Hey, I was able to do all my program on the whole farm except this field number nine here. That's kind of a wet, muddy mess. So I wasn't able to do my normal program there. And 10 days or two weeks later, uh, we were able to finally come back and just no-till into it. And why don't you guys come along this fall and see how well it does. And that determines if no-till will work on our farm. And, uh, and, and many people are like, yeah, boy, this ought to be interesting, you know? And this stuff gets posted all the time post it all the time and you're like you show me any data the universities have hundreds and hundreds of papers that correlate planting date planting conditions to yield so to simply say we're going to come back 10 days later or two weeks later and compare this field to the rest of our farm and see how it does but also how many farms out there I have three fields around my farm all planted to soybeans and they always, when them three fields are planted to the same crop, they always yield the same. No, there are three different fields, there's a good chance there's going to be a, a zero, five, ten percent uh, swing in yield between them three fields just because that's how it goes. Uh, you know, different fields just do better some years and so <laughs> that one I, I like the analogy of the the corn hybrid test plot because if I just said anybody on YouTube or social media or the forums that's doing test plot or uh, showing how no-till works or doesn't work on their farm and and they're just a complete idiot for trying to show this example you guys would be like hey John you're being a little hard on some of the farmers out there but with the by relating it to the corn test plot and not calling anybody dumb, I think you guys can can agree with me that that's kind of dumb to, for people to show that way on, on their own farm. Another common thing we see is guys will go into their corn stocks and I get lots of these messages. Guys will send me messages that say, see John, this is why 
we can't do no-till here. And they'll go out into their corn stalks and they'll dig a bunch of ruts and they'll just be horrible. And, uh, um, and they'll say, see, this, this, look at the ruts out there. If we had to wait for to be able to get out here to no-till, we, we would never be able to get out here. And they're not wrong in the fact that, yeah, they if they had to wait, it would be a horrible mess. But uh, uh, the other thing that's going on is uh, they have no structure. They have no life. They have no soil health. There's no ability for that ground to deal with all that excess water. There's, there's no structure to carry anything. And it can't, you know, since it's corn stalks, they always say, well, my corn residue is, is keeping my ground from getting warm and dry. No, because corn ground traditionally gets a little more aggressive tillage up front. Um, and then you also have that big root system. So the next year, when we're dealing with dead dirt, uh, the next year, that corn root is, is more like a sink or a sponge in that soil. Because if you took a probe, you would see how that corn root zone is just nice, soft, just just kind of a mess until it builds structure. And uh, but that's what's going on there. And so when I tell guys that, some guys come back and they want to uh, have a conversation about it. And other guys are like, "Well, fruit you, uh, I don't have dead dirt, and uh, you know, fall off the face of the earth, would you, buddy? You know." I think they use different language than that, but you get the gist of what they're trying to tell me. And, uh, well, and, and so, yeah, so I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it right there, guys. And uh, you guys tell me what your thoughts are. Does that make any sense to you, what I said? And uh, we'll go from there, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one, guys.